Hey everybody, so it's time for me to wrap up my December 2021 reading. I cannot believe that the year is over, but I am so excited to go into 2022. But that doesn't mean I didn't read a bunch of amazing books to tell you about in December. So today I'm here to tell you about the books I read in December 2021 that I definitely think need to be on your TBR. So let's get started. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, I hope you're safe, and of course I hope you're reading an amazing book, or two, or three, or four. Uh, maybe one from my top ten list that just came out, hopefully. Um, I am here today to talk about the books that I read in the last month of the year. And I have to say, it was a uh, um, not a bunch of books because it was a crazy month at work, but every one of these was really, really good. And all of them are very much worth your time. So get out that pen, get that paper, that Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please order these books from your local independent bookstore, support the author, support the bookstores, or get your library to get you a copy. You get a copy for yourself, then you can share it with all your fellow people using the library. And I love that idea. So the first book that I want to talk to you about is White on White. Um, I have had some help with trying to correctly pronounce um, Ms. Zavas's name, and unfortunately, it just, I always, I'm trying to phonetically do it, and it doesn't work, and I feel like I'm not doing it justice. So, I'm going to hold it up there for you, and I'm just going to call her brilliant. How's that? Um, so, this story takes place, it's one of those, this, like, books that's really, like, in a moment of time. So, we have a young uh, PhD student who's working on their PhD, and comes and rents the bottom portion of this house in order to live and do research on their PhD project. And they understand that in the upstairs, the wife of the owner has an art, uh, art museum, that's wrong, an art studio, that's what I mean. And she comes every once in a while and will come every once in a while to do art. So the student's been there a little while. He's uh, been doing their research and uh, the wife shows up and it turns out that there's been, there's some turmoil in her life and the relationship between this student and her becomes complicated and becomes strained at times, becomes codependent at others. And you don't really know where the book is going to go or what Ms. Savas is trying to tell us until the very end. The book deals with art, it deals with loneliness, it deals with friendship, it deals with obligation, and it deals with this sense of wanting to get out of something sometimes um, that you didn't realize what you were getting into. Does that make sense? Um, this book just had very, um, it was just a perfect little piece of literature. And I just think about it all the time. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So that's White on White. This is out from Riverhead Books. And I'm going to hold her first name up there. And her last name is Savas. And she is phenomenal. And you should definitely read her book. Okay. Next on my list is a book I'm not going to say much about because I have talked about it in my top 10. And that's Beasts of a Little Land by Juha Kim. Um, Early 1900s, Korean independence movement, the story of two young children and how all of this and uh, a move to Seoul uh, affects who they are. We walk, get the political intrigue in the background, we get real life drama, and we get everything we need for this book to be absolutely a perfect debut. Um, watch my top 10 video if you want an even more in depth. I've actually talked about this book quite a time, enough times on my videos on my channel. So I really love it. It's out from Echo. I want you to read it. Beasts of a Little Lamb by G a Little. I keep saying Beasts of a Little Lamb. It's Beasts of a Little Land by Juha Kim. And it is fantastic. Okay. Then I decided I was going to do a graphic novel. Now, Goodreads had done its awards. I don't really follow the Goodreads awards. None of the books that I actually like or read ever do very well in the Goodreads awards. But this book had won the graphic novel category, and it sounded fantastic. And then I saw it at the bookstore, so I picked it up. And that is 
Lore Olympus by Rachel Smythe, Volume 1. Um, so this is a retelling of the Persephone myth, sort of updated as far as where it occurs in time, um, and uh, her relationship or spawning relationship with Hermes. Um, Hermes. Hades. Hermes is in this book, though. I'm trying to find a good picture to give you an idea, sort of, of the um, amazing art that is in this book. So let me so, show you. I'll just show you this one. It's so beautiful. It is absolutely stunning. And I need volume two because I want to know what happens next. It's just a great graphic novel. I, I see why it won. It is beautiful and everything you're going to need. I love a good myth retelling. So that's Lore Olympus by Rachel Smythe. And this is out from Del Rey Books. Um, and I really recommend it. And I mean, the paperback is as beautiful as the hardback. I'm just telling you right now, it is a fantastic, fantastic graphic novel. Another book that I have talked about quite a bit on my channel is Still Life by Sarah Winman. I'm a huge Sarah Winman fan, so I think she really does no wrong for me. Um, this is a book about the family made. It takes place at the end of World War II. Um, a lot of it takes place in Florence, Italy. It's about a soldier that returns home from the war to England. He winds up inheriting a property in Florence from a man he actually convinced not to commit suicide while he was there. This book deals with the family you make versus the family you have. It deals with friendships. It deals with the complications of love. It, t it deals a lot with like the dedication that we have to people that we love unconditionally. And it goes through a lot of time. It goes through like a bunch of I think like 40 or 50 years. Um, there's a fantastic character named Evelyn who the soldier meets at the very beginning of the book. She's an older lesbian woman and she is dedicated to art and sort of you always know that their meeting has importance and when they get to see each other again, it's rewarding. Um, the characters are fantastic. There's a parrot that will make you laugh. It will break your heart. It will do everything you need to do. You can totally get lost in it. It does go a little bit fast towards the end, um, but I didn't mind because I was totally into it. So that's Still Life by Sarah Winman. Beautiful book, beautiful story, definitely worth your time. Okay, the next book is actually one of the books, I, I'm, I should do a video called this, but a book I didn't think I wanted to read. So every once in a while, what I do is I just pick up a stack of books that have been sent to me, read the back and be like, okay, I'm gonna give it five pages and see where it happens. And when I picked up Bright Burning Things by Lisa Harding and read that this was the story of a alcoholic mom, former actress who had lost everything due to alcohol, uh, alcoholic single mother, and the trials and tribulations of uh, going into rehab, possibly losing her son and her life being a mess. I was like, I'm, this is not the book for me. You know, it's not. I started it. And next thing I knew, I was 30 pages in, 40 pages in, and I was blown away. Lisa Harding makes this topic, which to me almost seems trite because we've seen it before, so real and new and visceral. I know a lot of people hate that word, but I have never felt more in the head of an alcoholic than I did when reading this book. I've never felt such loss or fear of losing one's child as I did while I was in the head of Sonia, the main character. Um, she goes into rehab. She doesn't know. Her father takes the son, makes promises about her son and her dog. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I was real worried about the dog. And if something had happened, I'm not going to spoil anything. But she had me on the edge of my seat the entire book. And I felt like, as a reader, I was going through the withdrawal with Sonia. Like, I don't know what it is about the words. I don't know what it is about the way she told the story. But she just did something absolutely new for me. And it blew my mind. Um, and there's a lot of growing up in this book, but there's also a lot of fear. There's this, what happens when everything you know is taken away and you don't know what the future actually looks like. And you, you, and her denial of her own problems 
is so frustrating, but so real. I don't even, this book was just really real. Um, I thought it was fantastic. Um, thank you, Harper Via, for sending it to me. Um, I'm sorry, Lisa, um, because I thought I wasn't going to like your book, and I absolutely adored it. It's not an easy read. It is not a feel-good book a lot of the times. Don't go in it for that, but you will definitely be blown away by this book. So that's Bright Burning Things by Lisa Harding, and I'm telling you, it surprised me. Let it surprise you. Last but not least, to wrap up the month, I just wanted to read something fun, exciting, and just give myself a good kickoff into 2021. So I decided to jump into the novella by Kate Elliott called Servant Mage. This is out from Tor.com. Now this actually does not come out until this month, January, and I don't know exactly what day. I apologize. Just says January 2022. Um, now, Kate Elliott, if you are a fantasy reader, you have seen her books. They are everywhere in every fantasy section. I've never read her books, but this book sounded interesting. This is the story of Felion. She is a young mage um, in a world where mages are basically servants, and she has the power to create light, fire, and um, she's basically in servitude when one day a group of rebels come and sort of, tr they sort of try to trick her, but she's way too smart for it. They convince her to run away and join this cause. And she and this group of other mages go on this adventure together. And the world is in one where there's been this big political upheaval. There was a revolt against the people in power. And basically that whole entire family line was killed off. And there is a group of people that are trying to find ways to, to sort of rectify that. Um, I'm not doing a great job of describing this because it's just so good. But what I will say is Felian is a fantastic character. This book could have been three times as long and I would have read it. She has heart. She has smarts. She has brilliance. She has a sense of honor that I found very, very powerful. I thought the adventure in it was great. I, I cried at the loss. I cheered at the winds. And I want to know what happens next, Kate Elliott. I need to know. It is that good. So Servant Mage by Kate Elliott. It's coming out this month in, this, in January. Get your hands on it. It is definitely worth the time. So I want to say this isn't a big stack of books that I read in December, but it is a stack of books that I am so happy to tell you about because all of them are very good for very different reasons. As always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. I could not do this without you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you are new to my channel, thank you again. Um, 2021 was a great reading year. I am so excited to see what 2022 does. So hopefully you'll join me on that journey as I continue to make videos and talk about books. As always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye everyone.